and welcome. It's Morgana here and today I'm going to show you how to paint this lovely Edret with a, a loose watercolour marshy background. Uh, you can see I've already drawn out a very simple silhouette of my bird uh, and I've masked it using my uh, drawing gum. This is my Pebo drawing gum here that I've used. This is just uh, to protect the bird whilst I'm doing the background wash. And I'm using my Hake or Hake brush uh, with twin colours. You can see I've got one colour on each side there. One is Prussian blue and one is burnt sienna. And I'm very lightly just dry brushing uh, the bottom part of the page here, leaving plenty of white because this is where uh, the marsh water is going to be. So I want some nice, uh, nice sparkle there to indicate uh, the light glinting off the water. So that's that part done. Next, I'm going to wet the uh, the paper, taking care not to uh, get water onto the uh, dry brushing that I've already done. That was with quite thick paint, uh, so it tends to stay wet for a little while longer than usual. So I am just, you can see I'm just going around, around the bird shape, wetting the paper, ready to do a lovely wash uh, on the background, uh, which I'm going to do in exactly the same colours. Uh, this is again the Prussian blue and uh, burnt sienna, still using that brush with the twin colours on, uh, doing some lovely bold strokes, bold upward strokes, and you can see because I've already wet the paper, that lovely diffusion of colour uh, that's already happening there, spreading around beautifully. I'm not too concerned about this being uh, terribly precise, uh, you can use whichever colours you want, I just happen to, uh, happen to be in the mood for these particular two today. Uh, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, I think they worked really well together. You can see I'm just continuing to sweep upwards. Uh, I know it looks a bit stripy, but uh, it's the uh, water spray to the rescue. <laughs> Adding a little bit of extra water. Uh, to, and you can really see that blue starting to uh, diffuse out wonderfully there. Uh, which I'm going to uh, help it out by uh, tipping, tipping and tilting just in one direction, just on a slant there. I just want a little bit of extra directionality and blending. I don't want too much of this uh, this stripe that I've done. I don't want it to actually be, you know, stripes of color. I just want uh, a nice blend and a lovely diffusion, which I think we've managed to get here. Obviously, this has created a lot of water on the paper, as you can see. Uh, I'm using uh, a tissue to soak that up. Uh, and just a brush to uh, pull paint into places that I want. Uh, you can see there it is very easy to pull up excess water as long as you're very careful. Just using a uh, tissue or um, kitchen roll is also very good as well. Just use whatever you have to hand. And now whilst the page is still wet, uh, I'm going to add in uh, some reeds, some lovely, uh, some marsh plants, uh, and I want these uh, these strokes to diffuse in, which is why I'm doing them whilst the paper is wet. You can see already there they're starting uh, to blend and diffuse and uh, look really lovely and um, sort of incorporated into the background there. Again, still only using the same two colours. Uh, this is Prussian blue and burnt sienna. Uh, putting a few into the water here. Um, I must admit, I, I don't have a reference photo for this one. This is entirely from uh, imagination, uh, aside from obviously looking at reference photos uh, for the bird. Uh, but this marsh scene is uh, sort of coming together as we're doing it, really. Uh, You can see here I'm just darkening parts where I think I want a little bit more depth, uh, sort of creating the background, deepening the colours, 
adding a few more lovely little reeds here. This is really uh, very much sort of make it up as you go along almost sort of um, painting here. You have to uh, let the background really speak for itself, have a look at what you see in it, uh, and then react accordingly. And this is what I'm choosing to do. Putting in a few reflections here. Using my, uh, this is a rigger brush that I'm using. I think it's quite a large one, I think it's a size three. Uh, and just taking the taking the reflections down there, pulling up oh, a little bit of excess, uh, or quite a lot of excess water on that one there. Uh, so good thing about watercolour though is you can you can pull paint and you can pull water up. And there we go. This is uh, the piece after the uh, background has dried. You can see it looks a little different in colour, that's due to the lighting, my apologies, I did this a couple of days after. Um, and you can see I'm just starting here on the bird, uh, this is a great egret I'm doing rather than a little egret, so he has a lovely uh, bright yellow bill. This is cadmium yellow uh, that I'm using here, uh, it gives a lovely, uh, lovely bright colour uh, in contrast to our um, soft diffused background. A little bit of dark colour just to start to bring in that eye silhouette. Um, I use ivory black for the eye and then a little bit of extra burnt sienna popped into the beak there to uh, bring down that yellow with a realistic uh, sort of colour shading on the egret's beak. And there we are, just going back in with my very fine brush, putting in a little eye detail uh, before moving on to shading. Uh, you can see on the bird's neck there is a stripe of blue which uh, my mastery blurb must have missed, um, which I've decided to uh, incorporate in. Uh, as the, uh, the egret is a white bird, I'm using um, a very, very pale blue uh, to create some shape, to create some shadow, and I'm using my scrunched up tissue uh, to really diffuse the colour. So I'm putting in the blue where the shadows would be obviously on the bottom part of the neck where the uh, light's not hitting it as much uh, and then I'm using the tissue to uh, soften the edge and then sort of diffuse it into the white so you sort of can't, you almost can't see the join if, uh, if that makes sense. Don't want sort of too many hard lines here except just where I'm putting here under the, uh, the base of the wing joint. Obviously that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a darker line because there is a very definite line uh, on the bird there. I'm just putting in a few gentle sort of stripes there of colour um, just to uh, give the impression of some uh, feather definition. And this is quite an impressionistic bird, this is very simple. Um, if you follow these, uh, follow this, it should be uh, relatively easy uh, to replicate. Um, I believe it's, yes, it's Prussian blue that I'm using for this again <laughs> in keeping with the rest of the, uh, the painting there it is that's my <laughs> terrible palette it's actually a saucer <laughs> and um yeah you know literally that's my dried up paint from the other day put a little bit of water on to reactivate it very very watery and you can see here that's going straight on from there from the palette you can see how uh, pale of a color it is um, but you can also see how this pale blue is adding shadow and depth to this white bird. Um, it still looks white, it doesn't look blue, uh, it just looks like a white bird uh, with some shading on it. So uh, I'm actually really pleased with how this turned out this one. And now I'm just uh, um, starting work on the bird's legs. Here with my uh, fine deep tail brush, this is a triple zero brush, uh, and I'm using my black again, but um, with plenty of water diluting it at the moment. You can see it looks grey here. Uh, this is ivory black. 
and uh, just putting in that little foot there. His uh, egrets are wading birds, so they have absurdly large feet um, in proportion to the rest of their body, or at least I think so. Whenever you see them sort of high stepping through the marshes or through the wetlands, um, I always think they look so funny with their little feet, but um, wonderful too. Love, love egrets, both little and large. You see here I've got a slightly more concentrated black now uh, and I'm just putting that into uh, over the top of the uh, diluted black just to uh, bring a little bit of extra definition and shape and shadow to the leg. And now I'm using uh, a rigger brush again. This is, I believe, uh, my size 3 rigger brush. Uh, and again, I have wet it with some uh, burnt sienna and Prussian blue. Uh, and I'm just sort of going over a little bit those lovely, uh, soft, diffused reed lines that we created earlier, um, giving a little bit of sharpness to them. So the illusion is, that, you know, there's some in the background and uh, some in the foreground, just sharpening them up a little bit, bringing a, them a bit more into focus and adding uh, some darks into this lovely soft background. And now I'm also using the rigger to just uh, fill in uh, some extra water. I decided that after I put in the background, I decided the water wasn't quite high enough. Um, so this is a technique you can use. It is a little clumsy. Um, I would have preferred to dry brush this, but alas, <laughs> foresight is not my strong point. Uh, you can see here I'm using the uh, length of the brush, uh, this lovely long thin brush to create uh, similar lines to uh, imitate the uh, the ripple of water around the reed beds. And here we are again just imitating these lines but uh, you can see I'm wiggling the brush as I go down to create reflections. Uh, the impression of the broken reflection uh, in the line of the water. Of course, if you don't have a, a, uh, a rigger brush at home, you can uh, use any thin brush, any fine brush that you've got. Uh, these are simply, th these are new for me, the riggers. Um, I only ordered them recently and I haven't really used them very much, so it's very exciting for me to be using them today. <laughs> That sounds very silly, but sadly it's true. New brushes are exciting. Uh, they're also very fun to do these lovely sort of uh, these lovely long flicks because the uh, the brush itself is uh, very flexible. Um, they come in all different sizes as well. I think you can get some very fine ones, uh, but this happens to be a slightly large one I'm using because I want some nice broad and strong strokes from it. And now this I have changed to my flat brush uh, and I'm just adding in uh, some bulrushes, changing some of these uh, basic sort of reeds into bulrushes. Um, I love bulrushes, I think they uh, look great in paintings and in real life. Um, this is um, some burnt umber that I'm using here, lovely dark colour, and I've actually mixed it with some Prussian blue as well to really uh, give it a sort of that deeper uh, tone and to tie it in also to the rest of the painting. Just literally just a simple line with the flat brush, simple stroke, and then fill out the shape. There we are. And you can see this is my uh, little white gel pen that I'm using, just for some finishing touches on the bird. And all I'm doing here is I'm just going around the outline and I'm just softening that down a little bit. Uh, you may find this if you use masking fluid quite a lot, uh, you can sometimes end up with some quite hard edges, uh, which for nature drawings is probably not really what you want. So just see here, I'm just using it very gently, very carefully, just going around and softening down some of those edges there, uh, making it look a bit more natural 
or giving the impression of some fluffy little feathers. It's a nice addition to watercolour, this white gel pen. It goes on quite nicely and there's a little bit of extra, little bit of extra white, which sometimes we all need. Oh, <laughs> apologies for my head there. <laughs> Concentrating very hard, obviously. And uh, there we are, there's the, uh, the finished painting. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you like it. This is a lovely loose watercolour scene. Um, I hope you uh, feel inspired to do something similar. It's a lovely way to do backgrounds for uh, wildlife, birds, animals, plants like. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and uh, subscribe to my channel for more. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and um, happy creating. <laughs>